and they're still having a real church I know, I'm just leaving so he can have a place to sit. These are keys too. picked up a bulletin. I'm not going to go over all things in the bulletin. Let's remember all of our shut-ins that's in the bulletin, the sick that's listed in the bulletin. Also, uh, the, the sunshine basket sign-up sheet on the bulletin board out in the hallway. So if you don't mind, if you brought something, if you would look at that. And also for the brunch, that's December the 10th, there's a sign-up sheet read also on the board. And also the annual shopping trip, December the 3rd. The sheet is on the bulletin board and it tells you all the things about it. And if anyone wants to donate to help with the shopping trip, see Susanna. Also the personal works will have their group meeting after the evening services. So remember that. And also I hope each one of you have a happy Thanksgiving this coming Thursday. 
Well, I know if you're like me, you can probably eat way too much, but it's good. <laughs> Into our services today, our song leader will be Joel Foster, our scripture reading Ray Moore, our lesson by Dennis Strine, our closing prayer by Joe Mormon, and we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer and be with John Ball. Won't you pray with me? Almighty God and our Father of heart in heaven, hallowed be the great and holy name. Your Lord, we come in prayer this morning with love and joy and peace in our hearts. Thankful, Father, for this another opportunity we have to gather here on this beautiful Lord's Day with our Christian brothers and sisters to worship you in spirit and in truth. Sing songs of praises unto thee, Father. Gather around thy table to remember the great sacrifice given to us by Jesus. And hear another portion of your true and divine word. We're so thankful, Father, for your church, both here and abroad. And we just pray at this time, Lord, that the truth will always be taught in your church. Thankful, Father, for each and every member and visitor who has come out to worship with us today. And we pray for your blessings on each and every one of those here this morning and their families. We uplift those of our number, Father, that are unable to be here this morning. Those who more mentioned in the bulletin, Father, those who are working, those who are sick, those who might be traveling, Father, you know their needs. We also pray, Father, this morning for those who might be spiritually sick. We just pray, Father, that they would, they would seek your, your guidance and open your word for the comfort that they may need, Father, to change their other ways. We pray, Father, this morning for Brother Dennis as he has prepared his lesson this week. We pray that he would have a ready recollection of, of what he has studied and that he would be able to deliver in a way that we will understand it and that we would be able to apply the things of this lesson that we need to, to make our Christian lives fuller. Just pray, Father, that as we continue this walk in this beautiful earth that you put us on, that we would always continue to let our light shine brighter, that we would always continue to study your word, that we would apply it, and not only be hearers, but doers of thy word. We also pray this morning, Father, for Brother Joel, as he leads our song service. We pray that as we sing, we will lift our voices up onto thee. We pray, Father, this morning for this great country that we live in. We pray for our military and our first responders at this point. We, we pray that you would keep them safe. We pray, Father, for our leaders, both here in the United States and, and all over the world, we just pray that they would continue to make laws that are that are in accordance with your will and your word. And we just pray, Father, that the laws that are not that are not conformed to your word, that, that you would defeat them. Lord, we're thankful again for this great country we live in and the many freedoms and blessings that we enjoy. We just pray, Father, that that we would always strive to be better Christians. We're thankful again, Father, for Jesus who died on the cross for us. We pray that as we go through the further exercises of service, Father, that all that is said and done will be pleasing unto thee, that you forgive us when we fall short of being the Christians you expect us to be. And this is the prayer we ask this morning is in the loving name of Jesus. morning. It's good to see everyone. It's good to be able to hear everyone finally after a couple of weeks of struggling. Uh, I'm so glad to see you this morning in this beautiful Thanksgiving week. 888. 888. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, 
Lord, for saving me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord dwell in Christ to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Seven is our hymn to prepare ourselves for taking the Lord's Supper. Two, one, seven. <clears throat> This morning, let's place all of our thoughts upon Christ and try to place all our worldly thoughts out of our mind as we take of the bread and the fruit of the vine. And it reads on the front that we do this in remembrance of Him. 
Also in Acts 20 and 7, he tells us when to partake of this. We partake of it on the first day of the week. So if you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We'll now have the prayer for the bread. Our kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to take of this bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we as Christians partake of this in a manner pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we'll continue in prayer for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, as we continue in this memorial service, may we keep our thoughts focused on Christ as he suffered and bled and died in our stead. We know this one, one act gives us the hope of eternal life if we only obey. As we partake of this cup, may we do it in our manner pleasing to thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
That concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is giving back to the Lord as he has blessed each and every one of us with. If you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 2, and it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Also, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, it says, Every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. For now have the prayer for our offering. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we come and pray apart from the table, give thanks for all of life's wonderful many blessings that you bestow upon us. As we prepare to give back just a portion of those blessings, we pray, Father, that all is given with an open and cheerful heart, and all is spent to uplift your kingdom, both here and abroad. This prayer we ask is in Christ's loving name. Amen. When I do this, I try not to say a whole lot to detract from the service. But we are in Thanksgiving week. We take time to be thankful for our many blessings. We do thank God for His Son, but that should be something that we think are thankful for every day and not just one day a year. We sometimes fail to honor those who are deserving of honor. When I first moved back here a few weeks ago, thinking about it this morning, that's 17 years has passed. Uh, the first person I heard direct this song, sing this song, was Brother Joe Warman. And I think of this song every time, of him every time I sing this song, I want to thank him for his influence and for the things that he's done for me. The way that he loved. The way that he loves. <coughs> the way that he loves is as fair as the day that blesses my way with love. Oh, uh -huh. 
happy press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you be. Well, keep your soul lift on. Be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortress of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasures untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust Him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. from Colossians <coughs> chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalms, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God and whenever you do in word, word or deed do everything in his name the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through him. My favorite time of the year. Time to be around family and friends and sharing good food and conversation. Maybe watch a little football. Maybe trying to figure out where they got that turkey with all them drumsticks on it. Appreciate so much the effort that goes into preparing the meal, of getting the home ready for guests, a lot of work. The thankfulness is a significant part in our relationship with God. The idea of giving thanks. Praising God and thanksgiving is mentioned 140 times in the Bible. The word thanksgiving is used 27 times. And even Leviticus 7 verses 13 through 15 mentions an offering of thanksgiving. But one of the best references of thanksgiving that you can find is in Psalms 100. Those five verses say it all. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth serve the Lord with gladness. Come in his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love lasts forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We're called, my friends, to be a thankful people. And James and Paul both tell us that the basis of our thanksgiving, of us being thankful, in the first chapter of James, in verses 17 and 18, he tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from the Father of lights. In Colossians 1, in verses 12 and 14, he, Paul tells us that we are to give thanks to God who qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, who delivered us from darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his Son, in whom we have redemption. 
We should be thankful to God because it honors God. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 15, he tells us to be thankful that it brings glory to God when we are. I guess we could think about it this way. When we are thankful, we recognize that God exists and that we are acting on the reality of his existence as the very source and means of our own existence. But it also recognizes our total dependence on God and everything that goes on in our lives. Having a thankful heart is a biblical command and the book of Psalms is filled with the call to give thanks. And Paul even tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. But he goes on to say that this is God's will for us. But there are consequences for our ingratitude. Paul makes it clear in Romans 1 and verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. You see, our ingratitude leads to bitterness, to grumbling, to complaining. And then more than likely it will go on for us to lead a joyless and wasted life. Thanklessness promotes pettiness. It leads to a preoccupation with self and our own problems. When we go to Ephesians chapter 4, or five rather, and we, we take verses four and verse 20 together. We find in these verses that thankfulness is a spiritual barometer. Here Paul contends that as children of God, we should display no foolish talk, no crude joking, those things that are out of place, but rather we are to give thanksgiving, always giving thanks to God everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, being thankful is our witness to the world that we believe and that we are dependent on God. By its very nature, being thankful is evangelistic. I like to spend the remainder of of our time this morning on things that we are to be thankful for. First, we ought to be thankful for the miracle of life. When Paul was in Athens, when he was speaking on Mars Hill in Acts chapter 17, he told the men in Athens, starting in verse 24, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined a lot at times and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he's actually not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. <coughs> Put it in very simple terms. If you need something to be thankful for this morning, check your pulse. Always be thankful for that gift of life. Now, it's easy for us to take life for granted. It's easy to forget just how precious it is. It's easy to forget that we wouldn't even be here if it were not for God giving us life. 
you know, for as long as we can remember, we've just been here, being alive. I mean, we don't know any other state. <clears throat> We're so immersed in life itself that we only see it in the context of itself. We don't see life as being compared to never having been born. Life just is. But it is a gift. Life is about feeling and breathing and thinking and worshiping, loving, playing, singing, work, and accomplishments. But let's give thanks for just being born. We should also be thankful for a reasonable amount of hell. It's hard to be thankful for life without being mindful of our health. The desire for good health is a biblical desire. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, David wishes Nabal and his wife Abigail a long life, good health to them, to their household and to their livestock. In the book of Psalms and also in the book of Proverbs, David and Solomon speaks of good health. In Jeremiah chapter 33, God promised Israel good health in return for their captivity. He said that he will bring health and healing to the land, that he will heal his people, that he will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. In 3 John verse 2, John writes, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Our health is the one thing we take for granted until things start going haywire. Until we start getting sick or, or we're in pain. Before we Say an unkind word, we need to be thankful for the health we have. We can't, we need to be thankful if we can speak because there are those who can. If we're thinking that this food tastes horrible, we need to be mindful of those who can't taste. If you complain about life circumstances, think about those who died young. We could keep this list going on forever. Being thankful comes much easier when we look around and we see those who are suffering more than we are. We should also be thankful for God's love. Augustine once said, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. best known verses in scripture are the ones that speak of God's love. John 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Romans 5 and verse 8, God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In Ephesians 2 and verses 4 and 5, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace that you have been saved. And I really like Romans 8, verses 37 through 39. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither the height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in our Christ Jesus our Lord. Consider for a moment what the love of God means to us this morning. It means that we can be given been forgiven of all of our sins. 
that we can live without guilt. It means that we can be saved and can have a home in heaven. It means that we are living today as his children. First John 3 and verses 1 and 2, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we'll see him as he is. A true blessing to be children of God. And Jesus said that if anyone loves him and obeys his teaching, that God will love him. That we will come to him, that we will make our home with him. And a part of honoring God is our being thankful for his presence. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. John writes in 1 John 3 and verse 24. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. <coughs> Another aspect of God's love is that he is providentially working in our lives. Paul testifies to this in Romans 8, verse 28. We know that in all things God works <coughs> for the good of those who love him who has been called according to his purpose. Philippians 2 and verse 13, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. And Ephesians 3 and verse 20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. We need to take time this week to thank God for his daily presence and for his daily working in our lives. Now, one of the most important things about this specific time of year, it is a day of thanksgiving to God for the bounty that we have. And I'm not talking about just the bounty of food. I'm talking the bounty of family, the bounty of friends, the bounty of his church. It is the one time of the year where we're not out there racking our brains trying to figure out what to get somebody. Or where and what we need to do is plain and simple. It's one of those things where we don't need a big turkey and ham and all the fixings. We can sit down with the TV dinner and still celebrate Thanksgiving. It better be a really good TV dinner, but... <clears throat> you see, it's one of those things it's not about... <clears throat> What we have is about being satisfied with what we have. Gratitude, being a thanksgiving people, unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and even more, an abundance. It turns doubt into faith and acceptance. It turns chaos into order a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger to a friend, a church into a family. Gratitude helps us make sense of our past. It brings us peace for today and confidence for tomorrow 
and a hope in heaven. In one of the songs that Joel led was Isaiah 40, verse 31. It is my go-to verse during the week. I was given that little plaque of Isaiah 40, verse 31. It sits on my desk. I can't look at my computer screen without seeing it sitting off on the side, and it's there for a purpose. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now, several months ago, Vicki's cousin had sent out a request to family. Her, her dad, Uncle Jerome, Vicki's Uncle Jerome, a favorite Bible verses. This was the first one I thought of to send it. And he sent a, a text back that he never heard that verse before and that he really liked it. It has a lot of meanings because, see, when we have that thankful heart, when we let God know just what he means to us, our strength will always get renewed. We will soar in life. We will not get tired. We will never faint. A thankful heart, a thanksgiving heart, goes so far, so very far in this life. If you have not obeyed the gospel, you can this morning express your gratitude to God for sending His Son to save you by faith repentance of your past sins by confessing Jesus as the Christ by being born again of the water and the spirit New Testament baptism to have your sins washed away you can become a child of God you can become a recipient of eternal life choice is yours this morning. And if you are a child of God, if you've been going through each and every day and not being thankful, you can this morning make that desire known to God that you are thankful for Him and for all that He has done. If you have anything that you need for us to pray for, we want to give you that opportunity as together we stand and we sing. <laughs> I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed, since I Since I have been redeemed
this morning. It's good to see some back that have been sick. We encourage you to come back this evening at five if you can. We hope that all have a good safe week for those that are traveling. We wish you safe travels. Look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning. This time we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give thanks today for everything you bless us with. We're we know at this time of year we, we are so thankful for our, our homes and our families, especially and we're thankful for the church. We give thanks to you for uh, the very good life that the day is was mentioned in our lesson today. We're thankful that we have life. And we give thanks for our families and our homes and our loved ones. We, we pray for ones that are in who are not able to be with us because of the illness today. Finally, Father, we pray for them. Ones who are sick, we pray for Ting and, and Sue Lewis, and we pray for uh, Ruth and Deborah and Rick. They struggle with her illness. We pray for her. She has surgery the, the, the day after Thanksgiving. We pray for her to do well. She has surgery, and beyond that, we pray for her to recover and be able to enjoy life once again. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those. We we'll serve our country today in military service far away from home. We pray that they will be returned safely to their home and be with their families as they may be without them at Thanksgiving time. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for everything. We give thanks to the we've heard in the lesson today. We're so thankful for the very life that we have this morning. To actually get rid of the breed and be here today. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for our nation, always the nation of freedom that we have in this country. We pray for our nation, we pray for our leaders, that they will do things which will enhance the cause of freedom, maintain the freedom that we have, and to help our nation grow in spirit and truth. We pray now that you be with us, Heavenly Father, as we go from this place this morning. Bless us and care for us as previous will along. Build us up on our right. 